<clears throat> he used to sing a song that said, he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to. You remember that song? Amen. Yeah. But he has. All right. Amen. Up to this point, anyway. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I'm glad to be living for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm glad he let me live for him. Amen. Did you know he let you live for him? All right. Amen. He let you. Praise God. I'm grateful. I want him to know that, too. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's stand and we'll get Brother Jeremiah to lead us in a word of prayer this evening. Then we'll get started. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We know that every day is a gift. And just like that song said, thank you for letting us live, Lord. And thank you for allowing us to be in your service one more time and to participate in the body of Christ, Lord. And we just thank you for it. We thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for your hand of protection. We thank you for all that you've done for each and every one of us and for allowing us to live for you. And we thank you for the word that you're going to give us tonight, Lord. And we just ask for your blessing on this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. You can be seated. Did you ever stop and consider this? has nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about tonight. But did you ever stop and think about how many things maybe God has saved you from experiencing? <laughs> Seriously. Amen. Maybe one of these days, whenever we get there, we'll be able to sit down and he'll tell us all kinds of things that was coming our way that he didn't let come our way. Amen. He delivered us from those mere... Uh, fatal incidents. Amen. You know, that uh, you think uh, that you appreciate him now, you're probably, when you hear what he's got to tell you, you'll really appreciate him. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's get Sister Emily to come up and she can make up our announcements here. Amen. God bless Emily. Thank you. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you all. Amen. Amen. All right. So this coming Saturday, September 23rd, hello, end of September, um, the young people are going on their youth top golf outing. I saw Sister Danielle send out a message about that earlier. So if you have any questions about any of the youth events, you can see her or go to Brendan. And then Friday, September 29th, the young people are having a youth service up here at 7.30. And then all night prayer will be that evening as well from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Saturday morning. And then getting into October, the first Saturday, October 7th, the young people are going to have a bake sale at the Belton Feed Store. Um, any help, contributions, donations, baked goods, all of it is acceptable. Um, they'll take all the help they can get. And then a first prayer will be that evening at 7 p.m. And then later on in October, Saturday the 21st, um, will be our next ladies get together. We're going to have brunch and um, go out and about for a little bit. Um, at 11.30 a.m. that Saturday, and then um, Royal Rangers will be at 2 and Men's Fellowship at 6 um, that evening as well. So a full day. And then um, Sunday, October 22nd, um, our Sunday school is going to take a little fun trip um, to the Robinson Family Farm in Temple. So that'll be fun for them. Our young people get to go out and do a whole lot um, it's a little bit more difficult with our Sunday school kids because they're smaller, but um, we try to have some fun for them. And then um, Friday, October 27th, is the North American Missions Rally in Gatesville um, at the Skiles Church. They are going to be hosting it for us, but um, our church will be leading the service. Um, so... If you're able to attend that, uh, you're more than welcome to come to the rally. So if you have any questions about anything, don't hesitate.
as always, don't hesitate to ask. Lord bless y'all. Sometimes we fail to realize, I'm afraid, uh, how good we have it. Yeah. We really do. I I don't know, I don't understand the computer <laughs> totally by any means. I do good to get on it, and but I do like to look at uh, things to think about our government and things about end time things and stuff like that. I know you cannot believe everything goes on there. I know that. But uh, I look, I like to look and see what people in powerful places are saying. Right. You know, that they are doing or are going to do and or what things they are, like the United Nations and the World Economic Forum and and uh, even our Congress and stuff like that, I like to uh, look at a lot of that stuff. And so, you know, I kind of look through that. And there's, I don't know who puts stuff on the computer, if it's just algorithms or, or what, but this uh, thing uh, keeps popping up uh, it uh, shows people that are afflicted you know people that have deformities people that uh, conjoin people uh, things like that and it's, it's just it, when I see those things uh, I'm already burdened that away for people you know the things that are bigger than a man can fix, yes. you know, in people's lives. We got a, there's a lot of hurting people. Oh, yeah. There really are, and you don't see them all the time. I don't see them all the time, but that thing does pull them up, and, and uh, I'm already conscious about it. Uh, I have people like that in my prayers, but. You know, I, it really makes me pray. You know, I, I tell the Lord regularly in prayer, I say, Lord, you know, this is bigger than a man. We need you. We need you. Amen. Amen. In our world, there's so many hurting people. Yeah. And it just breaks my heart uh, that people, uh, some people that are going through, some of them young people, you know, just Amen. babies, young babies, yeah. and just... Uh, it's not discriminatory on their age. It's just people that are, you know, and I, and I think about the Lord and uh, what he said. He said, when you have a feast, don't call your friends. Call the maimed, the lame, the halt, the blind, uh, because they can't recompense you, but you will be recompensed, you know, at the resurrection of the just. And Jesus was interested in those folks. Yeah. You know that? You know, if he's interested in those folks, I think we ought to be interested in some of them. I think we ought to, you know, we get, I'm not saying you, I'm just talking about Christian though. We get, you know, concerned with our own things we're going through and stuff. And my stuff I've gone through doesn't compare to some of those people. Well, some of those folks uh, really going through some tragic you know, they live lives totally dependent upon somebody else to help them. Totally, completely dependent. And it breaks my heart for them. It really does burden my heart. It drives me to pray. You know, pray for people I don't even know and never ever even seen. Because I just know it's out there. In our world, being in a fallen state is the reason all that stuff takes place. You know that? It's to condition. Uh, that's why bad things happen to good people. Even bad things happen to children sometimes. You know, children are born with those kind of afflictions sometimes. But, and it's because of the, the condition our world is in. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I believe when I, once we 
we get out of here, get on the other side, I don't believe there's going to be any of that. You know, everybody's going to be well. Everybody's going to be healthy over there. You know, and uh, it really drives me to pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Because there's so many people that need help. They really do. They need help beyond man's capabilities. They really do. I hope that, uh, you know, that you that you can broaden your scope, your horizons of your sight and look beyond your personal life and uh, realize that there's people in our world that are hurting. Amen. And uh, pray for them. Amen. Pray for them. And if should the Lord bring somebody like that into your life, uh, you know, be a blessing to them. Amen. Be a blessing. I don't, you know, it may just be a kind, kind word. It may just, you know, let them know you love them yeah. and that you're praying for them. Amen. You know, just extend yourself. Yeah. You know, praise God. Praise God. Amen. Well, good. God is good. That was what I was talking about tonight. But if we'll turn in our Bibles to Exodus. Exodus chapter 23, verse 13. I'm going to read one verse of scripture. And then I'll let you be seated. Amen. Praise God. I am conscious to the fact that uh, when we talk about things here, there are people that's beyond just this group here that's listening by way of the technology. You know, and so uh, when I cover some territory, I'm conscious of that, and uh, so we want to we want to help people live for the Lord, amen. amen. Yes. I want you to live for the Lord. I want you to be built up in the Lord and drawn closer to Him, and I want people that don't know Jesus to find Him. Very good. Because this, listen to me, this is wrapping up. Yeah. It really is. I believe that. That may uh, make you feel uneasy, but you know what? It's the truth. Yeah. And uh, I hope if you do feel uneasy, that it'll draw you closer to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Get earnest with Him, get sincere with Him, and get close to Him. Don't settle uh, for less than what you can give to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Of yourself, of yourself in prayer in your life. Amen. Love the Lord. Get close to Him because it's going to be over before long. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Exodus 23 verse 13. It says, And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Now, the first part of that verse is uh, kind of the direction that I'm heading. Uh, it does tell us not to make mention of the name of other, other gods, neither let it be heard out of your mouth. God did not want the Israelites, nor does he want us looking to other gods. Amen. First thing, there is no other God. Right. And it's vain to seek any other God. That's right. It's abominable. <clears throat> but the first part of that verse is, does not just include uh, not mentioning the names of the God. It mentions everything that the Lord has said. There's many other things he said prior to the <coughs> verses. Amen. In all things, he said all things, didn't he? All things that I have said unto you, be circumspect. Amen. And if you're not familiar with what that word means, I like to look words up because sometimes uh, you may not get the, uh, the right idea of what it's saying. But Strong says that this word circumspect 
It means to hedge about as with thorns. Hedge about as with thorns. If you can picture that in your mind. That is to guard, generally to protect, to attend to. Amen? Praise God. In other words, everything, all things whatsoever the Lord has said, amen, pay attention to it, and maybe circumspect, protect that, cherish it, don't, don't let it slip from you, don't, don't let anything steal it from you, amen, praise God, guard it, hedge it as about with thorns, as the ideal. Well, what that word circumspect means. All things that I have said unto you. In other words, God's putting some emphasis on it. That the things that I have said are vitally important Amen. for you to pay attention to. Yeah. And don't let them slip from you. Pay attention to them, right? Protect that. That's something, amen, that you need. Uh... Praise God. You need it in order to live for God and to survive. Amen. Praise God. Don't be uh, lenient in that. Right. Pay attention. Be circumspect. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God doesn't just uh, say rambling words. When he says words, they mean something. They're important to us. Amen. Yeah. They are very important. Remember, I, I think it was Sunday that I covered a little bit uh, Jesus mentioning the law. He said there will not be one uh, dot or tittle that will fail of the law. Heaven and earth will pass before one jot or tittle fail of the law. Amen. Right. In another place, he said, till all be fulfilled. In other words, the smallest of mark in the Bible is important. Amen. Amen. The smallest of mark. Pay attention to it. <clears throat> Praise God. In Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and 20 in verse 19 is where Jesus has resurrected from the dead and he's appeared to his disciples. We're very familiar with this passage of scripture. He's telling them that he's sending them forth. He's going to be caught into heaven. And he's sending them forth before he does that. Right. And he sends them to go and teach all the nations. And when people believe the message that they are preaching, that they are to baptize them. And we know that it says here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And that name is Jesus. That's the name they went and baptized in. Amen. But he, the next verse basically says much of what we just got through reading in Exodus, the same principle. It says teaching them, those people that believe what the apostles have said and they have believed and embraced the gospel, got baptized in Jesus' name, those people are to observe all things. There's all things. That's all things. He said that in Exodus, didn't he? In the Exodus, he said, and in all things that I have commanded, I have said unto you, be circumspect. Circumspect, excuse me. Amen. But he's teaching them here. Uh, he's telling his apostles that are with him. He said, teach those believers to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Who's the you? That's the apostles. Amen. He's talking to those ones that he had chosen while he walked this earth. He had them with him. There's 12 of them. And he was, uh, with the exception of Judas. I mean, because Judas had betrayed him and went and hung himself. But he's telling them that once people believe uh, the message and respond by repenting and being baptized in Jesus' name, you need to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, the apostles. Amen. 
Praise God. And, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world, which is the end of the age. We're living in an age from the day that Jesus gave us life unto his second coming. Yeah. Amen. We're living in an age, an age, a time period there. Amen. Where the Lord is uh, is saving people by his grace. Amen. By his sacrifice that he gave for us. Amen. He's restored us uh, to, the, to God by his sacrifice. Amen. And God is that Holy Ghost experience. Amen. Amen. We're restored to God by the death of his son, it says. Yeah. Praise God. But we are, and this is this is going this is valid. This Jesus said, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world or the age. Amen. In other words, this is in effect until Jesus comes again. Amen. Amen. Yeah. amen. In fact, he closes out with Amen. So be it. Yeah. Amen. amen. Praise God. This is not changing. Right. Amen. Yeah. It's not changing. Praise God. In fact, if you look at John chapter 17 and verse number 20, amen. Jesus in chapter 17 prayed for his disciples. Again, he's uh, praying for the apostles, right? Yeah. Amen. Those ones he's leaving in charge with his gospel message. Amen. He says here in verse 20, John 17, 20, as he's praying, he says, Neither pray I for these alone. I'm not just praying for these 12. Right? Yeah. He's praying for these 12. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he said, I'm not praying for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. Through their word. Amen. Amen. And remember what Jesus said in Matthew, go teach those that believe to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you twelve. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. As we're supposed to be doing that today. Yeah. Yeah. Teaching people to observe all things whatsoever Jesus told those, those apostles yeah. that he chose, amen, while he walked the earth. Amen. He gave them his message. Amen. Yeah. He gave them what to preach. He gave them what to teach. Amen. And he said, people that believe what you preach, tell them to observe all things. Yeah. Amen. Be circumspect, in other words. <laughs> Don't let it slip. Don't let one piece of it go. Amen. Hold on to it fast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hold on to it fast. Keep it. Amen. Don't let the devil come and rob you of that. Amen? Right. Yeah. Don't let anybody try to change it. Don't accept anything but that. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, Paul said in Galatians, he said, uh, Though we are an angel from heaven, uh, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we, the apostles, have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Amen? Amen. There's only one gospel, and Jesus yeah. gave it to those men he chose as he walked the earth, and they gave it to us, and we're supposed to hold that circumspect. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Protect yeah. it and keep it and hold to it. Don't deviate from it. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. In all things, it's yeah. not pick and choose. You don't pick and choose. Right. Amen. Well, I like this part, but I don't want that part. We don't have we don't do none of that. Right. I mean, there's a lot of people that's doing that, but yeah. we are not to be doing that. We are, amen, to, uh, amen, praise God, buy the truth it says and sell it not. Amen. Right. Praise God. We want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So help us, Lord. Amen. 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 That's what they tell you to do in the court of law. Amen. That's what we want. And Amen. that's what Jesus is. He is the way. He's the truth. And he's the light. And you know what he says is the truth. Amen. Praise God. He said to Pilate, Amen. For uh, this purpose I came into the world that I might bear witness to the truth. Amen. Praise God. He was the truth, and everything he said was the truth, and everything he established is the truth. And when men deviate from 
from that truth, they're deviating from God. Yeah, amen. amen. And when men cleave to what Jesus laid out and what Jesus established and what Jesus handed off to those apostles, come on, come on Jesus gave them yeah. his word. Amen. Yeah. He gave it to them. Paul told the Christians at Ephesus, these are saints, these are people that were born again of the water and spirit. He says in verse 19, Ephesians 2, 19, Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. Amen. But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. We were not God's people. Right. Amen. Us Gentiles, we were not God's people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But now we are the people of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. We are in his household yeah. and are built upon, praise God, we are built upon the foundation. The foundation is the very beginning of a building. Right. Amen. Amen, right? Yep. That's the first thing you put down, and that's the first thing Jesus put down whenever he came and gave his life. He laid a foundation. Amen. And as he said, Paul said over in Corinthians, other foundation can no man lay right. than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus, right? Amen. He is that foundation, but we are built, the Christians, the Christian church is built upon the foundation. Yes. Amen. Jesus laid a foundation, right? And the real, genuine Church of Jesus Christ is built upon that foundation. These two befores in this wall, this is the building. Yeah. It's not the foundation. This sheet rock up here, these electrical components up here, that clock back here, those bathrooms back there, that's all just part of the building. But that's not the foundation. The foundation is the part that was laid at the beginning. Amen. Amen. And we are built, we're the building, we are built upon a foundation. Yeah. The real church is built upon a foundation. It has a foundation under it. Amen. Amen. And that foundation is the foundation of the apostles. Mm. There's those apostles again. Right. Amen. Those ones that Jesus said, I'm praying for those that believe on me through their words. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So if you believe in Jesus after the apostles' words, what he Jesus gave to them, you've been prayed for by Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I think if Jesus prayed for me, I believe I can make it. Amen. Amen. Don't you? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you step off of that foundation, his prayer is not to you. Amen. But if you will have the tenacity enough to get on that foundation and believe, amen, praise God, and, uh, you know, cling to that, yeah. hold to that, that truth that Jesus gave those apostles. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They're part of the foundation. Jesus is the chief cornerstone according to this. Yeah. Amen. The apostles are in the foundation. The apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone yeah. in whom all the building... The upper part, right? Yeah. The upper part. We're the building, folks. Right. I said we're the building. We're the two befores, the sheetrock. We're the uh, the nails that kind of hold it together. Different things. We're the, there's doors. There's restrooms. Yeah. <laughs> me. There's a vestibule in this building. There's all kinds of. We're the building. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus Christ, being the chief cornerstone, is the perfect stone that the foundation came off of, which is the apostles and prophets, and we're built upon what they preached and what they taught. Amen. Right. Amen. If you're in the real church, yeah. right. you can be in this building and not be in the real church, because to be in the real church, you got to be in the faith. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The faith that was once delivered to the saints. That's right. the ones that they had. Amen. Yeah. That's the faith that they had. Amen. Right. Solid foundation. Amen. Solid foundation. And nobody can lay another foundation. Oh, they can try. They can do all kinds. They can build their Mormon temples and their and their Jehovah's Witness temples and their and Baptist temples and their you can just name it. Amen. But this is not an organization. This is a faith. Amen. Yeah, amen. This is the, the truth about Jesus. Amen. amen. This is the Word of God. Amen. amen. This is what God gave us, and He gave it to the apostles, and they 
preached it to us, amen, and we believed it, amen. amen. And we're on the foundation if we believe it, amen, and amen. give ourselves to it. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Okay, so he says, uh, in whom all the building fitly framed together. We, can I tell you what? We're not islands. We're together on this. Amen. God has woven us together. Yes. Just like he put all, just like whoever built this building, they put nails and put things together, and that's why it's a building. It's a structure, because it's all been tied together. Amen? Amen. And God's church is tied together. There's no big eyes and little U's. Right. Amen? We're all in this together. Amen? Yes. Praise Amen. God. We have different things that we do. Amen? We have different things that we operate in, and all that stuff, but we're all one building on top of one foundation. Amen. Yeah, right. Praise God. We're fitly framed together and we're growing. Amen. Right. We groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Not a worldly temple. It's a holy temple Amen. in the Lord. Yeah. I said it's a holy temple in the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Did you know you're going in the direction of holiness whenever you get on this foundation? Yeah. You are. Right. Amen. You can get off if you want to. I'm staying in it. Amen. I'm staying in it. Amen. This is the house of God. And God's house is the holy place. Amen. Amen. In whom you also, and here it is again, build it together. Why are you build it together? Amen. For a habitation. That's a dwelling place. A dwelling place of God through the Spirit. God is in this group of people. Amen. God is in this church. Amen. amen. The Spirit of God, amen, is a place where He dwells. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the Old Testament, they had the holiest of holies, and that was the place that God dwelt. But I want you to know something. God is not dwelling in temples made with hands. He is dwelling in the body of Christ. Amen. 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 And that's God's dwelling place. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Now I'm still talking about the apostles in John 17, that prayer again. Verse 14, Jesus tells, <clears throat> he's in his prayer, he says, I have given them, the apostles, yes. I have given them thy word. <laughs> they didn't have just any word. They wasn't going around just telling things they thought about God. No, they had a word given to them. Amen? Amen. They had a message given to them. Yeah. Amen. And they gave it to the world, and everybody that will believe it, amen, will be saved. Amen. Everybody that adheres to it will be saved. Amen. Yeah. Come on, everybody that embraces it without deviating from it will make it to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to hang in there, don't you? Jesus said, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them because... They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. It concerns me when I see churches start gravitating to being like the world. Yeah. Come on. That's the wrong direction. Amen? Right. Because Jesus' church is not of the world, even as he was not of this world. Right. Then he says in verse 16, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. Amen. You know what sanctify means? It means make them holy. Right. Make them holy through the truth. Amen. Amen. Thy word is that truth, right? Yeah, yeah. Come on. We need to preach it on the word of God. Amen. Amen. We need what they preached in Amen. our lives. Amen. We need what they preach in our life. Yes. Amen. Now, if you look at 1 Peter 1, 22, I'm not going to read it all. Verse 25, that's good reading for you. He says basically the same thing, amen, that we were sanctified by the truth. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 3, amen, he speaks about things uh, concerning the end time that are going to be happening. And then he references the Apostle Paul. I'm not going to read all the scriptures for time's sake. I'm just kind of giving you a basic understanding of that's where we're taking this scripture from that text, that context. It says, Paul, or Peter's saying about Paul, he says, as also in all his epistles, which is letters, 
Amen. When you read from Romans all the way, the majority of those epistles, those are letters to the church. Yeah. Amen. There's others like Peter and James and Jude and uh, the writer of Hebrews. Whoever wrote that, I don't know the name. I think it probably was Paul. That's just my opinion on that. Amen. And the Apostle John had some letters in there. All those are letters from the apostles. Paul being the majority of the writing, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. Right. But Peter references him. He says, as also in all of his epistles, his, Paul's letters, Speaking in them of these things, these things that Peter just got through talking about, and other things, in which are some things hard to be understood. You know, there are some things that are hard to be understood. <clears throat> are there any scriptures that you have a hard time understanding? <clears throat> huh? Praise God. Amen. There are some things that are hard to be understood. It said that right there. Yep. Praise God. <clears throat> some things. Amen. And you know what? Some things. You can't do enough book learning to learn them because they come by revelation. That's right. But that's not to say you shouldn't have studied to show yourself approved unto God. If you'll stay in the Word, that's where God will bring revelation Amen. to you. Amen. If you don't understand something, he'll, <clears throat> He will bring it to you with understanding. Yes. And Scripture will be upon Scripture, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Amen. There you go. Praise God. He, he will bring it to you. <clears throat> Praise God. I will readily say I do not know everything, but I do know there are some things he showed me. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. I'm still learning. Anybody Amen. else learning? Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you know it all, you know more than what the Bible says. <laughs> Amen. Because the Bible says if any man thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing he knows compared nothing. to what he ought to know. Right. Amen. 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 We all got things we need to be learning about Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's truly the only one that knows it all. Amen. But there are some things he has revealed unto us. Yes, sir. Praise God. And we need to walk in those things. But anyway, some of the things that Paul wrote uh, were hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, they don't pay no attention to studying and looking and digging and staying in the Word of God, right? Those are unlearned people. Those that are unlearned and unstable, you know, they're wishy-washy. They're wishy-washy people. Amen. In and out, in and out, in and out. Amen. They're wishy-washy. You know, pray. I know you're going to... Hey, I, I better not say that. I don't know why. You have known some. That's been like it. <laughs> but in and out, in and out, in and out. Amen. Those that are unlearned and unstable, what do they do? They rest. That means they wrestle with it. You ever see anybody wrestle with the Scripture? Can you imagine anybody trying to wrestle with God? You're going to say this? <laughs> I, yeah, I know your word says that, but you're going to change your mind. <laughs> they may not literally say that, but some people try to do it. Yeah. Come on, but you know what happens to people when they do that? They rest the scriptures as, the, as they're unstable, they're unlearned, and they rest the scriptures as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You know what? If you twist the word to say whatever you want it to say instead of what it's really saying, you're hurting yourself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. You never do yourself any good by you know by twisting the word to make it say what you want it to say. That's right. Amen. Listen to me. This word stands. It's solid. It's given from God. Amen. And it, it would do us good to say, Lord, whatever your word said, yeah. I'm going to give myself to it. Yeah. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to walk in it. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And those that speak the word of God according to Jeremiah 23, 28, he that hath my word. Amen. We got the word. Yes. Right? We got the word. If you believe in Jesus as he gave to his apostles those things, you have his word. He that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Amen. You know what? There's a lot of people that know the truth, but because of whatever pressure, they cave. Amen. They cave and they let up on the word. Amen. 
Praise God. But we don't need to let up on the Word. Amen. We don't need to cave for any reason. Amen. Praise God. We need to be faithful. We need to be circumspect. Amen. Amen. To whatever the Lord has told us, we need to guard it. We need to keep it. We need to hold on to it. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yeah. Jeremiah 23, 22. <clears throat> this same chapter. We're going to look at several verses here. Amen. But Jeremiah 23, 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words. Amen. This is what's going to happen. If, they, if a man actually stands uh, in the in the counsel of God, and they, amen, if they have caused my people to actually hear the word of God, right? You know what's going to happen to those people? Then they should be turned, they, they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. If they're not doing that, they're not sent from God. Right, if they're not turning people from their evil ways, amen, if people are staying in the same shape that they came in, amen, amen. they're not doing the work of God, they're not sent from God, amen. Right. This word of God will turn you from your sins, amen. 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 A preacher is not doing you any good. Amen. If he didn't preach this, that sin is sin. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Somebody's got to sound the trumpet. Amen. No Somebody's got to sound the trumpet. Amen. Amen. Come on. He is the Lord and he changes not. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, Hallelujah. today, and forever. Amen. Amen. If this book says something's wrong, it's wrong today. Amen. Amen. If he Amen. says something's right, it's right today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Don't change it. Amen. Amen. Right. Don't deviate from it. Yeah. Praise God. Jeremiah 23, the same chapter, verse 29. Is not my word like a fire? Mm -hmm. Is like a fire? You know what a fire does? Right. Come on, when you put gold inside of it, yeah. it gets the impurities out of it. Amen. Yeah. His word is like a fire. Come on, listen to me. If you're really hearing the word of God, that word is going to get the impurities out of your life. Amen? It's going to get the impurities out of your heart. Amen? It's going to do a work on the inside of you. Jesus came to a mess of people that looked pretty good on the outside. They were making a good show on the outside. But Jesus said, listen to me. You're white as sepulchers. Amen? Praise God. They got mad at him and hung him on the cross yeah. for saying those kinds of things. You know what? But his word is like a fire. Amen? Amen. And whatever, listen to me, with gold, if you're like gold or you're like silver, whenever that fire comes your way, it's just going to make you pure. But if you're hay, wood, and stubble, it'll burn up the chaff. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. It'll burn it. But it's still fire. It's like a fire. Amen. You'll either love him or you'll hate him. Amen. Come on. You'll either embrace him or you'll crucify him. Amen. But his word is like a fire. Amen. The fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and he'll gather his wheat into the barn or the barn. The barn or the barn. Amen. But he's going to burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Right. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise he said, Lord. my word is like a fire. Amen. Saith the Lord. Amen. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Amen. In other words, Jesus said this. He said, whosoever falls upon this rock shall be broken. Amen. Because you know what? A broken and a contrite spirit. Amen. God won't refuse. Amen. Whoever falls on this rock, Christ Jesus, amen, will be broken. Amen. That old self will stubborn person will be gone. Amen. Come on, it's going to be ground and you'll be a humble person before the Lord, seeking Him. Amen. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind into powder. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, am I making any sense to you tonight? Yeah. So he said, my word is like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophet, saith the Lord, that use their tongues 
and say, He saith, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Amen. You know those smooth talkers that only want to tell you what tickles your ear. Amen. Come on, you don't need to hear what tickles your ear. You know, you need to hear what gets you close to God. You need to hear what gets the sin out of your life. Amen. Come on, you need to hear what gets you in touch with the Holy One of Israel. Amen. That's what you need to hear. That's His Word. Amen. That's His Word. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. But there's a lot of people that takes up the word of the Lord. Did you know that? There's a lot of people that take up the word of the Lord. Amen. And I can look at across their congregations and I hear a lot of, you're a kind soul. Thank you, brother. I know you're going to preach. Amen. There's a lot of people. Oh, my goodness. That's preaching about Jesus. But their congregations stay the same. They want to hear about healing. They want, and I like healing. They want to hear about how God's going to bless you. Just send your dollars in, and you know, yeah. God will bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I do believe God. If you honor God and your finances, I believe He will bless you. Yes, he will. <laughs> but they won't preach like we're preaching tonight. <laughs> They won't, they won't preach, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Praise God. You know why? Because people will walk away sometimes. Yeah. They'll lose them. Amen? But you know what? When people love God, they won't walk away. That's right. When people love God, amen, and want to really know Him, they're not wanting some substitute of the real Word of God. Amen? Right. They don't want the real, genuine, thus amen. saith the Lord Word of God that amen. changes their lives and rescues amen. them from the creatures that they've been, that's been destroying their lives. Amen? amen. I'm glad for the Word of the Lord. Amen? amen? I remember years back when I first got in church, my old preacher, he was a holiness preacher, and I love him to this day. He's going on to be with the Lord. Amen? But man, he preached it. He preached the straight and narrow. Yeah. I love it. Amen? Praise God. Amen. I love it. Because you know what? It changed me from what I was. Amen. To being a Christian. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It changed me from being an animal and a beast yeah. to being something I hope and pray that God would be a vessel of honor for God. Amen. Something that would be closer to being like Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Than what I was because I wasn't. We used to sing that old song. He brought me out. Of the miry clay, he set my feet on the rock to stay. Oh, he put a song in my soul today, a praise, a song of praise, hallelujah. And you know what? I used to take my Bible because I, I, re, I looked at it through the lens of that Bible. He brought me out of the miry clay. The preaching of this word brought me out of the creature that I was. Amen. amen. Into a new life. Amen. amen. It's the preaching of the word of God. Amen. amen. It's the preaching of the word of God. Amen. The truth. And my pastor was brave enough. Amen. To preach it. And he loved us. And he cared about us. And he, but he preached the word of God. He knew that if he watered it down. And tried to sugarcoat it. Amen. It wouldn't save my soul. I would still be the person. I used to be, but when he preached to me, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and he would receive me, and I would be his son, and he would be my father, amen, and then he preached, having these promises dearly beloved, let Jesse Ratliff cleanse himself from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, and perfect holiness in the fear of God. My pastor was brave enough and had enough courage enough to preach to me, Jesse Ratliff, you follow peace with all men and you follow holiness because without it you won't see the Lord. Amen. I want to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want to see Jesus. He said, be holy for he's holy. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to buy myself a 
salvation. I would be lost as a goose in a thunderstorm without the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But He has called me yes. to live soberly, righteously, and godly right now. Amen. He does not want me to be the creature I used to be. He never wants me going back there. Amen. He never wants me going back there. He don't ever want any of his people going back there. And being that, amen. Praise God. Psalms 50, verse 16. There are those that are preaching the word of God. Amen. They're preaching part of it anyway. They're making a show of it. And God calls them wicked. When they don't preach the whole truth. Amen. Amen. In verse 16 it says, Psalm 50, 16, But unto the wicked, God said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. What are you doing? What are you doing preaching my word? He's saying, <laughs> preaching about my covenant. You know, he, we got a covenant with the Lord, don't we? Amen. Yes. Amen. Sin. He's getting on to him, seeing thou hatest instruction. You're preaching the word of God, but you don't like to be instructed. Right. Amen. And cast my words behind thee. When thou sawest the thief, thou consentest with him, and hast been protectors with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, thou, thou thy tongue frameth the seed. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanders thine own mother's son. These things thou hast done, and I kept silence. You ain't heard me say nothing, God said. You ain't heard me say. You know what the Bible said? Because sin is against an evil work is not executed speedily. It's fully set in the hearts of the sons of men to do evil. Because people think they're getting away with it. Amen. But listen to what this says. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one of thyself. You got to think it. God's just like you. You know, he, he ain't like you. He ain't like man. He ain't like fallen man. He's holy. He's holy. Amen. He's like nobody else. Amen. And if you got to speak his words, you got to speak it faithfully. That's right. Without fear or favor. Oh, praise God. I said without fear or favor. He went on to say, now consider this, you that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoso offers praise glorifies me, and to him that ordereth his conversation, that word conversation there means a road as trodden. In other words, whosoever orders the road that he's trotting aright, will I show the salvation of God. You don't continue a life of sin and just talk about Jesus. Amen? Come on. We need to not only tell people about Jesus, we need to show people what Jesus has done in our lives. Amen. Come on, we need to show them. Yeah. People think we're a bunch of hypocrites and we're talking about Jesus and we're living something different. Right. Amen. Amen. We don't need to be hypocrites. Nope. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, they love me, they love me not. Oh, Praise God. Amen. I need some flowers to pluck. They love me, they love me not. They love me, they love me not. They love me, they love me not. Amen. People that love God love to hear the truth, priest. Yes. Amen. Second Timothy 2.19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. My time's running out. He didn't say that. But the foundation of God. There's the foundation again, right? Mm -hmm. The foundation of God standeth sure. What Jesus laid. Jesus' chief cornerstone, the apostles were, and prophets were built upon that foundation. Right? It stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ, everybody that's got baptized in Jesus' name, yeah. come on, you're saying you're His. Yeah. Come on, get out of it. Get out of sin. Get out of inequity. Quit doing it. Amen. Come on. Get out of it. Embrace the Lord. Amen. Let, let the Lord change you. Yeah, yeah, Make yeah. yourself available to Him. Yeah. Amen. Use me, Lord. Yeah. What's that? Use me, Lord. Yeah, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Paul said it like this in Ephesians. I'm going to have to 
cut some of my scriptures out here, I guess. Praise God. He, the, the Christians at Ephesus, he he says, Ephesians 5, 1, be therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love. You know what? That's the perfect way to walk right there. You'll, you'll deviate from a lot of sins if you'll just focus on walking in the love of God, right? Amen. Come on, you'll love your brother. You'll love your neighbor. Amen. Praise God. Love works no ill to his neighbor. You won't be lying to him. You won't be stealing from him. That's right. Come on, just focus on loving people and loving God. Right? Yeah. Amen. That's the good direction. Walk in love as Christ also loved us. And has given himself for us and offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling, uh, sweet smelling savor. But fornication, that's sleeping around, isn't it? Yeah. And all uncleanness. Oh, come on. Pedophilia. We need to talk about that, don't we? In our day and time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Perversion. All uncleanness. And covetousness. Come on. How many times can you do it? Let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Not even one time. Don't be doing it. Come on. If you've done it, repent of it. Quit doing it. Amen. Don't do it no more. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying you can't be forgiven. But Paul said, listen to me. Come on. Don't do it no more. Amen. Amen. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, dirty jokes, right? Amen. Which are not convenient or suitable. Amen. It's not wrong to jest and, and, and say things that are decent. Amen. That's not what he's saying. He'd be talking about dirty, dirty jokes and filth and stuff like that. Let, let it, come on, put all that stuff away. But rather give it a thanks. For this you know. You know it, don't you? Come on, we all know it. Come on, we've read it in the Word of God. Amen. This you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath an inheritance in the kingdom of God in Christ. Amen. Come on, we want people to come into the church. Amen. Coming into the church is not coming into this building. Coming into the church is coming into the faith. Right. Come on. Come on. Get in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not the worldly ghost, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We're talking about the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Get in the Holy Spirit. That's why it's called the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, anybody that does these things participates in this type of activity. They don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Don't let nobody convince you otherwise. Right. Come on, and what are we doing? We're making sure, amen, that we be circumspect in the things that the Lord has told yeah. us, right? Yeah. Come on, pay attention to what God has told you. Yeah. Be circumspect in it. Don't deviate from it. One iota, one dot, one jib tittle, amen? Come on, yeah. stay with the Word of God. Stay with what Jesus gave us, amen? Yeah. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Because of these unclean things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye partakers with them. Amen. Come on, quit running with them. Right, Don't partake in the stuff they're doing. Love the sinner. Feed the sinner lunch. Do some of those things. But don't go out and drink a beer with them. Don't smoke a joint with them. Right. Amen. Come on, don't turn. Don't get in a dirty joke with them. Amen. Right. Come on, you're called to be different. Amen. 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 Oh, y'all are quiet on me. Some of you preachers. Some of you are thinking about what I'm saying. <laughs> Amen. You know what I hope? I hope that you hear me and I hope it gets you closer. Yes, sir. To Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope it makes you rethink. Yeah. And think, oh, you know what? I think I need to get a little closer to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I need to, you know, kind of cinch up my belt a little bit, my spiritual belt a little bit. You know, tuck my shirt tail in. Not that that's a sin to have your shirt tail in. But I'm just saying, you know, there's some spiritual things I need to kind of do to maybe get, maybe, maybe I've drifted a little bit, you know. Maybe this is going to help me get a little closer to Jesus. You know what? Because when that trumpet sounds, come on, if we can get you close to Jesus. Come on, if we can get the sinful things out of your life, if we can get the carnality out of your life and get you in the Holy Ghost and walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit and preaching in the Spirit and operating in the Spirit, I want you to know when that trumpet stands, you'll be caught up in the Spirit. But if you're in the flesh, you won't. If you're in the flesh, you won't. 
Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 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 Thank you. Amen. Praise God. You were. He said, "Be not partakers with them, for you were sometimes." If you read and study this out, it's talking about in your past. In your past, you were sometimes darkness. You used to not be a Christian. You used to be a child of the darkness. But now, come on, you're not that no more. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You know what that means? Walk is an action word. Those are actions that come out of you. Amen? Don't just say Jesus, but show Jesus. Amen? Live in Jesus. Walk. Walk in Jesus. Walk in the Word. Have the Word in you. Amen. Be tapped into the Word. And let the Word be tapped into you. Amen. 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 Praise God. A lot of people say, I've got Jesus. But the question I'm asking everybody tonight is, Jesus have you? Right. Does Jesus have you? Amen. preaching folks. Amen. I think y'all are a bunch of great folks. I'm just preaching. Just, good, good. I'm just ministering when I feel like the Lord put upon my heart to minister. Good, good. Okay? Good. I'm just sowing seeds. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Sowing it, the sower went forth to sow. Yeah. Some of the seed fell by the wayside. That fowls came and devoured. That's what the devil comes and gets it out of some people's heart. Some people's got thorns in their life, and what's sown, it'll be choked because of the thorns. Some people's got hard hearts of rocks there, and it, it won't really be able to get down like it like it needs to, and when the persecution comes, and they'll fade away. But some people are good ground. Some people, the seed of the truth of the Word of God falls upon, and there's nothing hindering it, and it starts growing, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and it becomes begins to bear fruit, and God is pleased with it. Amen. Amen. It bears fruit, and it won't be bad fruit. It won't be thorns and briars. It will be good fruit. It'll be fruit that the Spirit and Word of God produces in their lives. Amen. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all think clocks are sin? <laughs> My time is it is. I was wanting to talk to you about developing convictions. Maybe I can talk about that later. Because my time is about up. <laughs> Amen. He went on to say, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Yeah. He's not saying, Don't reach out for sinners and love them and be good to them and stuff. Don't be partakers in what they're doing. Really. And they're saying, love them, be good to them. Go out of your way to be good to them. Be kind to them. Don't be judgmental to them. Amen. If it wasn't for God, we'd be in the same shape. Amen. We'd be in the same shape. But listen to me. We don't go and do their activities. Amen. God has called us out of doing those things. And he's called us to help get other people out of those things. Amen. Amen. Let's drop down a few verses. Wherefore, verse 14, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest. You know when you're asleep, you're not conscious of things. And people, a lot of people are spiritually asleep. But he's saying here in the word of God, Paul is, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest and rise from the dead. The prodigal son, when he left father's house, he was dead right. in trespasses and sin. But when he turned and came home, he was alive again. Amen. And here Paul is telling these Christians at Ephesus, Amen. Awake thou that sleepest and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. See then, look at what the scripture says. I didn't even notice this until just earlier. See then that you walk there's that word again. Circumspectly. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize that was there. That's what we started off with. 
in Deuteronomy, be circumspect in all that I have told you. Isn't that what he said? Amen. Amen. Pay attention to it. Guard it. Protect it. Amen. And he says here, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeem in the time. Bind up the time because the days, believe it or not, listen to me. Oh my goodness. A, a lot of people are so asleep that they don't realize the days are evil. Yes. I'm telling you, people are nowhere near God. Like they shot. There's people that's living for God. I'm not saying there's not people. But the, the our society. Right. Amen. Our society. Mm -hmm. The days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, I want to go to 1 Thessalonians and I'll, and I'll, chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. And I'd like to read it all. But I will... I will can you get that for me, Rowan? I haven't got it in my notes. I just, what was it again? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. I can't take you deer hunting with me, Rowan. You'd already be gone. <laughs> when they walk out there and they're ready, you got to get them. I'm playing. Rolling, rolling, you're doing good. I'm just playing. For this, Paul said this to the Thessalonians. For this is the will of God. Yeah. What does it say right here? We just read in Ephesians 5 17. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Yeah. Christians, the will of the Lord, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Amen, that you should abstain from fornication. The next one. That every one of you Christians, right, should know how to possess his vessel. Your body's a vessel. Your house is the temple of God. That you should know how to possess your vessel, his vessel in sanctification. That's, that's holiness. Amen. Come on, that's holiness. And honor, in honor to God. Yeah. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll talk about where your convictions come from. Some another time. That's where I was going to get to, but I didn't get to. Because my time is. Praise God. What's that? I do believe we're living in a time that Paul told Timothy to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will not put up with what, like what we talked about tonight. Uh, did you know that? We're living in that time. There, you, there, you, there's many places you can go. You, you won't have to hear that. You won't have to hear that. They say pastor's meddling. Huh? The pastor's meddling. Peddle, meddling pastor. Yeah. <laughs> the sad thing about it, brother, is the church itself they don't want to hear the truth. Well, you know what? Uh, the Lord's coming back after a people that's made themselves. Amen. 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 And, uh, you know, there's large churches. There's large groups of people that gather together. Yeah. You know, but that doesn't mean, and I'm not against that. I 
I believe that God has some large churches, some large gatherings. But that doesn't mean that that is necessarily the church. You know, there's going to, you can read some of the books, the churches and the book of Revelation. And in one of those churches, I'd have to look it up, but he said, there are those that basically have been faithful. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. That's what it says. But there was a lot of them that was not worthy to walk with him in white. That's, that's what it leads you to believe. I mean, praise God. Out of seven churches, he reproved five of them. Yeah. They, there was things that they needed to correct. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And you know what? We, we need to hang on to the truth. Amen. Amen. We need to believe what the Lord laid out. Amen. And cleave to it. Don't deviate from it. That's right. Amen. Stand with me if you would. This is kind of like landing a plane, you know. You don't just go. Right. It's kind of like. Shh. Amen. At least I haven't got a bad at Pastor John yet. <laughs> when he gives the off or the call, he's on his second or third sermon. I'm playing. He's, he does it great. I gotta give him back, get him back, because he gave me a hard time for years. <laughs> Adam, I'm glad to see you tonight, buddy. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you for the time.